Hey guys, welcome to another Pronage Park Guides episode, which we totally didn't take from PC Park Picker, totally. So on this episode, as you can see here, I'm playing a game. This is so the viewers don't have to look at a crappy movie maker's live show just to watch the video. However, don't worry, the video is still the same in all other aspects. Hope you enjoy the new footage. This build is the basic setup for a YouTuber. If you want to have quick video rendering speeds while still having the power to record your games at 60, this is the perfect build for you. The build comes with the Intel Quad Core, 8GB of RAM, 1TB of storage, and a decent 750 Ti, which can run most games at 60fps at set quality settings. The build rounds to around $500, so if you're short on money or cannot afford such, check out some of my other videos, I have something for you. For the CPU, I chose the Intel Core i5-4460. At less than $200, this is a pretty good processor for the money, especially with the fact that it has 4 cores, all that can be used for video rendering. With the two extra cores, one being compared to the i3, you'll have more time to do things rather than simply waiting around for your PC to, to render your video. For the memory, I went with the crucial 8GB DDR3-1600. This is pretty much because it's the cheapest 1600MHz RAM that existed at the time. As for choosing 8GB over 16 or 4GB, I generally, for video editing and rendering on a YouTube scale, only need around 8GB of RAM right now. I personally use 8GB of RAM to render my videos, and I haven't had a single problem. Plus, it's literally perfect for running next-gen and last-gen games, not including a few of the games. For the storage, I went with the Hitachi DeskStar 1TB 7200RPM HDD. For the money, a terabyte HDD is pretty much the only thing you can go with. Also, if you noticed, I use this exact hard drive a lot of times, and it's for good reason. The hard drive is literally the cheapest of them all. I don't know why, it's just... Oh, it, it, maybe it's cheap another way. Maybe not. Pretty sure it isn't, though. I, it should work perfectly for quite a few years. For the graphics processor, I went with the Gigabyte GTX 750 Ti. For the money, this card is literally one of the best you can get for 100 bucks. It runs slightly behind the 660D, but not by all on, it can be easily overclocked to supersonic speeds. In fact, you can run Advanced Warfare at 60fps at PS4 equivalent settings, which is quite impressing for a $100 graphics card. For the case, I went with the Thermaltake VL8001W2Z ATX Mid Tower. Once again, I reused a part from a previous part list. When stuff isn't coming out and you don't really care about the case too much, it's inevitable, guys. But yeah, I chose this case because it's roomy, cost efficient, and literally nothing more. If you can get a decent case for $25, take it and run. For the PSU, I went with the EVGA 430 watt 80 plus certified ATX PSU. Pretty much a duplicate again, but hey, it's a really good good PSU according to someone I know who uses the exact same PSU and by countless other people. You shouldn't really expect that many problems with this PSU as long as you don't put a 295x2 in it or something, which literally uses up more power than it, the PSU can output alone as a graphics card. I know, it's crazy. Hey, thank you guys for watching. If you liked the video, please send more of your precious seconds to clicking the like button if you like my video and subscribing if you've seen my stuff and like my stuff. Perhaps share while you're at it as well. It helps me and my channel a lot. See you guys later.